I barely brushed my hair, let alone washed it. Hey guys, it is Daisy and welcome to Superdrug TV. We've got a jam-packed show for you today. So sit back, grab a cup of tea or even a glass of wine, whatever takes your fancy. First up, we have the gorgeous Jacqueline Josser in the studio to talk about becoming an ambassador for the Superdrug Health and Beauty card and the benefits of owning one as well. You, I honestly feel yeah, like it gets greasy the shampoo quick. and conditioner, yes. like the same ones, it gets used to it. I'm telling you, that's And it thing. doesn't work as hard. That's science right there. That's science. <laughs> then I will be chatting to you about something close to home and something that affects so many of us insomnia and my experience with it so far. Some sufferers will struggle to get to sleep at night and some will struggle to stay asleep or they may have interrupted sleep where they're waking up numerous times before their alarm goes off. Remember to like, subscribe and hit that little notification bell so that you never miss an episode. Let's get into it. I am really excited to welcome actress to Jungle Queen, to style icon, to Supermum, the very beautiful Jacqueline Josser to Super Drug TV. Hello, darling. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm excited that you're here. I'm excited that we're doing a double denim number as well. <laughs> double denim. We love it. We love it so much. I know you've had a busy day today. Fill us in as to what's been going on. So, this morning we started in the Super Drug store, mm -hmm. which was good fun. We met a competition winner. Oh, that's She nice. was lovely, Natalie. Um, she done. She got a good old shop. I got a good old shop. What'd you get? Everything. <laughs> One of everything. Everything like hairbrush, face mask, hair mask, all the oils, all the moisturisers, everything. Well, you're here to celebrate 10 years of the health and beauty card, mm -hmm. which is so cool. We brought you on board as one of our ambassadors. Why was this important for you to get involved? Um, whenever something comes up that is organic that you you already have, mm -hmm. um, already shop at. There's truth in it. That that's like easy for me. I'm like, yeah, no brainer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Jack, what are your favourite benefits of the health and beauty card? I mean, there's loads of benefits. Uh, I would say my top three are free delivery over ten pound. That's over ten pound as well. That's very good. Yeah, that's a good one. Exclusive prices for members. Great. Special little club. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> points and offers. That's good. Which That's I love. Really and good. also they do a NHS discount as well. Oh, amazing. What is your favourite section of Superdrug to shop in? Where do you spend most time? Mm. Skincare? Mm. I think. Okay. Skincare followed by, like, makeup lash. Mm -hmm. I love, I love all the makeup. Now polish as well, because they've got like every single colour. Jack, you mentioned skincare. What is your skincare routine like? Because you've got gorgeous skin. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. Um, I've always been a believer of just like cleaning, washing the face. Warm water followed by cold water. Mm -hmm. Splash and wake up the face. Um, night cream, day cream, all the oils, essential oils, moisturiser. <laughs> um, exfoliating pads. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Mm. Very nice. Mm. I haven't tried the pads before. I Very good. Oh, I need to look I prefer them. them to the wash. Okay just because it's all on the little pad already, so easy, you can take them anywhere you want with you. And you just, it's literally like, mm, mm, done. Love that. Obviously, I've got two kids, everything has to be on the go, everything has to be quick, accessible, ready, in my handbag. So yeah, I love them. What else? I will try anything. That's good though. That's I do, good. and I like to change it up as yeah. well. Like, I don't have a set go-to, just because, Again, I don't know whether this is science or not, but I do feel like when you use the same product over and over, your face gets used to it. It's the same with your hair. If you use, I honestly feel yeah, like it gets if you greasy use shampoo quick. and conditioner, yes. like the same ones, it gets used to it. I'm telling you, that's and a thing. And it doesn't work as hard. That's science right there. That's science. <laughs> we're, we're making it up on the show. No, the it's show definitely tonight. a thing. Has your beauty or makeup routine changed since becoming a mum at all? I would say it's a lot quicker. Yeah. I take I take any chance I get, so I, but I do also make more time for it because I'm like right when the kids are in bed, the bath gets run and I then have my moment. It's important, and I it is very important. It, yeah. it helps me in so many ways. It's like my my quiet time, time to just like feel like me again. Try the new product. Do I find it really fun? Yeah, I love it. Are the girls into hair, beauty, makeup at all? Are mm. they stealing things from your makeup bag? Are they watching you getting ready? My three-year-old Mia is obsessed with anything makeup. The glitter, she, and the hair, colours. She's obsessed. Ella, not so much. Mm -hmm. She's six. She's like she is. She she but just they're very different. It's like wife, child, mm -hmm. angel. Um, Mia's the wild child, Ella's the angel. <laughs> but yeah, they're very different. They do love it. 
I love like, I've actually got them little um, El Sonana hairbrushes from oh, Superdrug. You always got to grab them something, haven't you? Let's talk maybe previous or past beauty mishaps or mm. mistakes. Have you got <laughs> any pictures or any times that you look back on in your life where you're like, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've all got a few. Mine always oh, run in definitely. eyebrows. I do remember my mum saying, don't pluck them. They all do it. Because she's got really thin eyebrows because she overdone it, but that was the fashion then. Yeah. But they never really grew back. She was saying, don't do it. So I was, but I, I used to brush them down. I don't <laughs> know. Now they're all about up and fanning them out, isn't it? It's just completely different. I used to do like, I, was, I had a grunge stage. So like the bangs, oh, that wasn't great for me. That was. That's a regret. But it's nice to look back on, to see like where no, we're No, but it's all over like, telly. Oh, no, it's all over telly. Fine. It's like my first EastEnders years are like <laughs> full fringe, like came from back here. Jack, we've got to talk about your time in the jungle as mm. well. I am intrigued to know, were you allowed to take anything in? No. Okay. So you don't go in with anything. Yeah. It's but, like, and who is, no, mean, you're literally allowed like three knickers. <gasps> yeah. And you have to wash them yourself. Oh no. In like, a mouldy pond. No, no, no. And like when you're only allowing one item out of everything, who's going to be really picking up and a it lip gloss? Was, I know, mine was a I mean? pillow with exactly. the kids' pictures on and stuff exactly. like that. Like it was sentimental more so. So, you know, you weren't even allowed a hairbrush. Stop. You weren't even allowed a hairbrush. Stop. I, you, like you got given like a comb, <gasps> but it was horrible. I hate using combs on my hair. Yeah. So, it was awful. You were rationed out That's there. why I was just Hard like, I had plaits every day <laughs> and I just couldn't think of anything else. I'd, I barely brushed my hair, let alone washed it, honestly. Oh my God. But that we all got used to our own smells. Yeah, of course, of course. And listen, it's a part of the experience. Yeah, it was, I mean? it was, you it was to. different, it was different. You have to ride it out. Let's talk a little bit about date night as well, Jack. What do you go for? Do you like a glam look? Do you like more of a natural look? Mm. Do you have a go-to look that like works every time? It depends, like if it's just a quick, like, cause date night, you know how it is. Like, I've got kids, so it's like, it's still rushed, it's still quick. Um, I do like make more of an effort. I'll put, I'll do a lash, yeah, probably. That makes you feel special. When yeah, lash, I'll do a lash, I'll do a lip and a bronze, and I'll, I'll do a bit of tan. I'll mm -hmm. always a bit of tan. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I'm not great at my own hair. I'm so I'll do so like a, a bun. Yeah, a little bun. No, <laughs> little buns are bun. cute. Buns or are probably cute. like literally like a slick low. That's the extent that I could go to. That's you know, I do low J low buns. But with some earrings. Earrings, exactly. Yeah. Like dress. I don't know. God, date night. <laughs> date night, they feel like a thing in the past, yeah. don't they? Yeah. It's all about just sitting on the sofa with a table. But away. even when we have the chance to go, it's like, nowadays, like, I can't wear heels, mm -hmm. I can't do it. Because mm -hmm. of COVID, we've yeah. had like too long off. We've got used to home comforts. I have. I've only been like, even now, I'm only shaving the bits that you can see. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's like, true. Ripped jeans, just the knees. It's true, and I just I love staying in. I, I know, love it's it. So true. I love my home comforts as well. Jack, thank you so much for joining us on thank this week's you. episode of Super Joke TV. You've been amazing, and thank you so much for supporting the health and beauty card as well. No worries, thank you for having me. Now, moving on to something personal to me. The subject of sleep is a popular one, and I know that I'm not alone in suffering with insomnia. In fact, one in five people have the exact same issue. My brand new documentary is sitting on BBC iPlayer right now, and it's surrounding the subject of insomnia, which is something I have lived with since I was a child. So I thought I would come on to Superdrug TV today to address the taboo surrounding this topic, and I really hope that it helps anyone else out there that is suffering too. So insomnia in a nutshell is struggling with your sleep and that can come in many, many different forms. So some sufferers will struggle to get to sleep at night and some will struggle to stay asleep or they may have interrupted sleep where they're waking up numerous times before their alarm goes off. And that can be a really, really exhausting experience. Now insomnia can come about from many different causes. It can be caused by anxiety, stress, exam or uni pressures. And it can also be caused as a byproduct of another mental health challenge or struggle that you may be facing as well. So insomnia has been present in my life for a really, really long time. I think I can sort of first pinpoint me struggling with my sleep around the age of nine. And I used to wake up really, really early. So I would get up at three or four in the morning and not have to be ready to go to school until eight or nine. So I would sit up in the early hours of the morning watching movies, trying to keep myself entertained, which meant I was so exhausted at the end of the day. But as I got a little bit older and as I entered into my teenage years, my insomnia, my issues of my 
enough sleep. They changed a little bit. They were still there, but they did change. And that is very, very common for a lot of other sufferers as well. So as I got to the age of 13, 14, 15, I had an inability to actually fall asleep. So I would sit up until the early hours of the morning, not feeling tired whatsoever, knowing that I had a 7 a.m. alarm to get up to. So I really wasn't giving myself enough time to get any shut eye whatsoever. I'm 23 years old now, so I've been suffering for quite a while and my insomnia has changed over the period of time that I have been suffering with it. But finally, I feel like I have sort of got a hold of some of my issues and it's been amazing to talk freely about this experience. And I think, you know, power and knowledge and understanding comes from talking and educating people. So today on Superdrug TV, I thought I would share with you my seven tips for a better night's sleep. Tip number one for me is all about positive reinforcement. So it's getting yourself into a really positive frame of mind, which can be so difficult to do when you're going through an episode. It's about realizing that one bad night's sleep does not mean that you have a write off for the rest of the week, that things will get better. Tip number two is don't go to bed unless you feel tired. Keep yourself up, keep yourself preoccupied. But what is really important is that you set a routine with the time that you get up even if it means that you have to get up at the same time on the weekends as well. That is really good for practicing good sleep hygiene and retraining your brain into a positive sleep cycle. Tip number three is don't feel pressure. Eight hours is not the perfect optimum amount of sleep for everyone. Some will get less and some will get more. It just depends on how it makes you feel. Number four is all about creating a peaceful, restful environment, which can calm a lot of anxiety and actually make your bedroom more of a safe and comforting space. So maybe light some candles, buy some pillow sprays, get some mood lighting, anything that makes you feel welcomed and comfortable and safe. Number five is all about connecting with people and finding a community of fellow sufferers as well. This is something that's helped me so much. One of the worst things about insomnia is the isolation and the loneliness that you can feel, but it's so important to realize there are other people that are suffering with exactly the same thing that can help you through it and that you can reach out to. Number six is all about getting those thoughts and feelings and fears out of your head, even if that means writing a journal or a diary about how you're feeling. And number seven is making sure that you're seeking professional help as well. So sleeping pills are not a long-term fix to insomnia. It's really, really important that you speak to medical professionals, that you speak to your GP to find a long-term solution for what you're dealing with. I really hope that you found some of these tips useful and I hope you know that you are absolutely not the only one that is going through this. And that is all for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. Next week we have Imogen from Imogen Nation and her mum sharing their thoughts on hormones during different stages of your life, including pregnancy. Plus Evie from Skin Perfect is going to be with us to talk us through the exciting new products by skincare brand Me Plus. You don't want to miss it.